Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be showing you Hamlet by the Lake, which is a new expansion to Hamlet, where we will take our village building lakeside. We're going to form lakes, build boats, go fishing and feed our villagers seasonal meals to give them special abilities. This is on Kickstarter right now. I'll put a link to the campaign page in the corner of the screen and in the description so you can go and see all of the final stuff, how to get a hold of it, what it will contain and all of that. I have got a prototype of the expansion contents to show you. So all of the base game stuff that you're seeing here is final. Anything from the expansion is just a prototype for now. If you're completely new to Hamlet, I have done an overview for the original game that I will link in the description as well. But very briefly, we are trying to turn our little Hamlet here into a town by constructing the church. We have workers to place to activate buildings, make them generate resources, turn those resources into better, more refined resources, construct new buildings to activate new landmarks that will score their own points racing to build some of these things. The first person to race to build buildings of types will get a medal that guarantees them. Uh, so all the wood you generate is high quality, for example, rather than the standard quality wood everyone else is shifting around. When we're constructing buildings, our villagers will be waiting in a location adjacent to where we want to build. We'll have to have bought blueprints previously at the town hall. So if I had a blueprint for this pond, say, that is a landmark that will award its owner points. I want to be that owner. Uh, it requires two wood to get built. And a key part of the game is being able to transport these resources. So using your donkeys and other workers, resources kind of belong to everyone, as do the buildings that we construct. And they get passed along where we have donkeys to transport the resource kind of an extra tile. So the resource to get to me if I'm doing the building, it would come from the wood cuts to an adjacent tile. Oh, my donkey's here, so it could come to another adjacent tile and I could build the pond that would cost two wood. There's no wood there now, so someone would have to go and activate the woodcutter building and have it generate wood again. I'd pop my flag on, maybe earn some points from that, construct more and more things. One of the key deliveries is to the church. Making those deliveries will complete more and more bits of the church, and once it's completed, the game will end. Well, there's a bit of a tweak for that for the expansion now because of the new things that it adds. There are some new buildings. So the storeroom is a basic building that will go in the bag, as well as a new tile for each of the types of categories. These get put into the bag when their first building of their type is constructed. So we've got a cliff side, which is a landmark that rewards you for matching the terrain types, which you don't have to do, but it helps if you do it. As you'll notice on these new tiles, there is water as a type of terrain as well. The water edges can only be placed adjacent to other water edges or adjacent to empty space. So you've got an extra kind of placement restriction that you didn't have on the other terrain types. The water edges can be used to form lakes that we we'll talk about in a minute. The aquarium will score you points for unused fish that you've got. The beach will reward you for each of its segments that are connected to lakes. And the dockyard will give you points for every boat that you have, all relating to the new elements of the expansion. So one of the key new things to the expansion is forming lakes. When we construct things and we leave gaps in the terrain, that's completely allowed. The tiles are unusual shapes sometimes, and you want to match up roads and things like that. I know I haven't done that in this example, but this example is trying to show off lakes, not clever planning. So whenever someone places a building tile and it fully encloses any amount of empty space, we form a lake. Now this does a couple of things. First of all, we get to fill in a space on the board and there's no longer you know seeing the table through it we've made a lovely little lake I know the tiles are a bit big in my prototype it's a prototype don't worry it even happens when these spaces are made from things touching corner to corner they don't have to touch edge to edge to form a lake so we place as many tiles as necessary to fill the space we have filled in the space look at my lovely lake in there it's made the town look a lot better, or future town. And we pop a fish token on all of the lake spaces. Of course, we might end up making an enormous lake like this. Any of the lake spaces that aren't touching a building do not get a fish on them because they are deep water. But back to my shallow lake. The first thing that you do is score a point for every two lake tiles that you've just placed. So you are incentivized to form these things, not just for the fish, but for some lovely points. So I would get one, two points for doing these. It's a maximum of 10 points per lake and you round down. And you have the option of placing a boat in a lake. A boat uses up one of your very few flags. You've only got six of these in the game and you want them for your landmarks and stuff. But hey, boats could be very helpful as well, especially across quite vast lakes. Boats can only be used by the player who placed them, and 
for that player, for the purposes of delivering resources, the boat counts as like a donkey. For the purposes of moving your worker around, you need to move them between roads. Well, the boat lets your worker travel between these things as if they were connected by a road or a bridge. Once you've placed a boat, it's there forever and you have to have flags to be able to place a boat. You can go fishing to do that. You place your worker on a building tile adjacent to at least one lake tile. So it's got to share an edge, not point to point. And as an action, you can remove the fish tokens from all the lake tiles adjacent to that worker's tile. So I've removed two fish tokens there. For every token that you removed, you go into the big bag of fish and remove that many tiles. So I would get two fish tiles. The fish tokens never go back and you can't fish where there are no fish tokens. And we can use these fish tiles in a load of different ways. We've got these new menu tiles that are defined by the season that we're in and one for the common fish that is for all seasons. At any time in your turn, you can use your fish and depending on the rarity of the fish, you can sell them, cook a meal with them to get an ability. But each ability can only be done once per turn. So at the most, you can use three fish. You can't have more than three fish tiles at the end of your turn either, so you kind of want to get them used. So the common fish, the green fish, it's the same no matter what season you are playing the game with. Common fish can be sold to get two coins, two gold. The uncommon fish, the blue, will depend on the season that we're in. So in summer here, you could sell it for a gold or you could eat it to get this ability after your next action refill all adjacent fishing spaces or it could have been you may additionally use other players donkeys or boats this turn you may not move them after your next action no one can take actions on the same tile until your next turn or if you have two or more donkeys gain another donkey for free without using a worker and then the rare fish i did manage to grab a rare fish as well first go uh, you can discard up to 10 fish scoring a point each you might have ended up with a ton of fish depending on the tile that you were standing on. The fish consumed for triggering this action counts as one of the discarded fish. So you got one just for doing it. Could have been you pay nothing for blueprints this turn. One of your workers can do two actions this turn or construct a building. Do not pay its cost, but also do not get any points. When you exchange the fish tiles for things, they go back in the bag. But there is also this deep water that we saw. If you form this lake and decide to pop your boat on it and it's got deep water in the middle, no fish tokens, you immediately get to fish three times without removing any fish from the lake and without needing any kind of action. So that would just have you drawing three fish tiles from the bag and you just get them. If you can't place a boat in this lake because you haven't got any flags left or you choose not to the deep water tiles can't be fished later by anyone it's only when the lake's formed there is a change to the end of the game now so one of the triggers is still complete all of the church deliveries but there is a new trigger in the flags that we've got if a player places their last flag on a building or a boat that will trigger the end of the game as well complete the current round so everyone's had the same number of turns and then we would go to end game scoring which stays the same but you've had more opportunities to score points from the fish and the abilities you've hopefully got from them and from all of the new landmarks that are included so there we go that is hamlet by the lake i hope this has given you an idea of what the expansion's about what it contains and uh, how it mixes up the original game again the kickstarter link is in the description if you would like to go and check the campaign page and see how how you can make this expansion happen. Uh, you can see my overview of the base game if you haven't seen that yet, or hundreds of other playthroughs that are on the channel. Thank you so much for watching this though, and I will see you for the next game. Bye everyone.